We've got another great interview for you guys today. It's Robert Greenwald, the founder of Brave New Films. Uh, you might remember uh, movies as Uncovered, The War on Iraq, Out Fox, through Murdoch's War on Journalism. It was the first one I saw of yours, and I was like, whoa, I like these guys. <laughs> uh, only done 65 films, TV movies, miniseries, uh, nominated for 25 Emmys, two Golden Globes. He won a Peabody Award. Not a big deal, though. I can go on. Um, but the new movie is Koch Brothers Exposed, little near and dear to my heart <laughs> in terms of money and politics, etc. So, Robert, welcome back to The Young Turks. Thank you. By the way, it's Koch Brothers Exposed 2014 edition, because we did the original, which you and I right. talked about several years ago, but now we've updated it and added new material. Is it going to be a trilogy? 2016's around the corner, <laughs> I'm afraid. So, know. but then that would make this Koch Brothers uh, Exposed 2014, The Empire Strikes Back. They, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, which, uh, yeah, who's striking who, though? Yes. <laughs> right. Um, so, uh, let's talk about what's in the movie, uh, why you chose uh, <coughs> to put that in the movie, and then, of course, we're going to have to ask the question of what drives these guys, right? Yeah. Like, they, in, they're really, in a sense, out of a Hollywood movie. They're like villains. It reminds me a little bit of the girl with the dragon tattoo. Now, of course, they're killing people, so that's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Although, this has some pretty bad health consequences, some of the things that they do here. Uh, and so, they're so villainous in some of the ways that you almost think, like, you, you have to put it into a documentary, because you, if you put it in a Hollywood movie, it would seem over the top, right? So, so what are the different things that they're doing that are in the movie uh, that give you a sense of who they are? Well, who they are is, as you say, um, complicated and difficult. We try to stay with the facts. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> my entire family are therapists. My father was, my mother was, my brother and my sister-in-law are. They do the human part of it. I try to stay, well, this is what the Cokes have done, mm -hmm. and here is the result that it's costing you. What is the price you are paying for their behavior? Mm -hmm. And what we show in the film, some of it, a lot of it new, is their attack on minimum wage. Why would people with a hundred billion and billion dollars attack minimum wage? We show their attack on and efforts to destroy unions, take away their power. We deal with their attack on social security, on the environment, on schools, on colleges where they're funding professors and programs where they take, uh, they literally require th ideological uh, servitude in return for some of their dollars. And it goes on and on and on. So we'll get to the why in a second. And so I'll, I'll play the role of the therapist. Then. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. My wife's a therapist too. So I. Mazel tov. <laughs> yes. So I'm, I'm used to that. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about how, which is in the movie. So how do they attack minimum wage? Well, they're very, very smart in their giving, and I think this is important. Uh, and by the way, the reason for this film now was Citizens United, because, mm -hmm. and we have a whole section on the Koch's role in Citizens United. They didn't like the law. They didn't just sit around and complain about it. They funded think tanks. They funded uh, grassroots. They funded a whole series of efforts to overturn the law. And they funded many of the Friends of the Court briefs. So they play, and they had the justices come to their hidden retreats, mm -hmm. right? Two of the justices were there. Yeah. You would think the justices would then say, I can't rule on this, but no. So we show how the Cokes didn't like Citizens United, they worked to overturn it, and now they're able to spend unlimited amounts of money because they changed the law in order to release the money. So that's interesting, because in the beginning, we have laws that actually protect uh, American citizens a, a little bit better. And people always think like, oh, progressives have always been losing. Well, that's not true, actually. Roosevelt obviously won for and set laws in place that actually went on for about 50 years. And there was this b bit of a golden period in domestic policy, at least. And Lyndon Johnson, and then and then Nixon's losing the Nader so bad mm -hmm. that you know Nixon passes the EPA because of the pressure that Nader puts on him, passes OSHA, etc. And then the fight back, the Empire Strikes Back, right? right? <laughs> yes. And that's when they start doing these, uh, you know, uh, the think tanks as you mentioned, etc. Then they get Citizens United. I mean, first of all, they got Buckley v. Velo in 76, which was incredibly important, and Bellotti in 78, which allows corporations to, to spend money, the, and the death of democracy begins. And then you get Citizens United, and then they're like, no, not enough. Then you get McCutcheon, and it gets even more unlimited in their spending, allowing them to then 
presu uh, presumably sh uh, give to politicians so that then in Wisconsin they do the union busting and and one of my favorite things was when they did the prank call oh, to Scott yes. Walker the governor of Wisconsin and he thinks it's one of the Koch brothers on the line and he's like yes sir how can I help you <laughs> sir yes and they and and the governors like that do that because that's how they are funding comes to them and that's how they win elections is that right it's a hundred percent right and that's how they stay in office as you know you've been on this fight a long time that when we have dark money in politics when we have politicians who are legally out begging every day that it totally transforms the political process i mean totally and radically now we have a process where a few people literally a small number of people legally can buy an election a senator members of the House, and probably a president. So how, does the, how do the think tanks play into this? Because I think that if you're not in the political world, you almost don't think about Heritage Foundation, you know, uh, Freedom Works, these kind of things. You don't think about them at all. And it seems like a really wonky thing. Oh, that's where the professors go mm -hmm. to think things over mm -hmm. and stuff. Tell me about their role and why the Koch brothers, starting basically 50 years ago, started pouring money into the think tanks. Well, they did it because they're very smart. And unlike other funders who worry about raising money for a stupid 30-second ad that nobody will remember and that will be off the air and will make no difference, the Kochs look at the long game. And there's a wonderful quote from David Koch, I think it's the 70s, when he said, what he's discovered is that politicians are like actors. The politicians read from a script. And what the Koch brothers want to do is write that script. Now, uh. how do you write the script? You write the script by starting with the basic ideas that the script is talking about. How do you do that? You do it with think tanks. You do it with pundits, you do it with college professors, you do it with publications. You don't just wait till the last minute and try to do a, a 30 second spot. And they've been incredibly successful at that. One of the very strong sections of the film, by the way, which is free online, th thanks to you and thousands of your listeners who've made it available. One of the very strong sections is Senator Bernie Sanders explaining how the Kochs have used the think tanks, have used the pundits, and he takes you through the basic wrong ideas about Social Security, going to bankrupt, have to work longer, and you see the number of papers from think tanks with exact wording from the think tanks, and then it's coming out of the politicians' mouths. You know, and sometimes we'll see on a day-to-day basis here on the, in the news that we cover on the Young Turks that you'll see a, every once in a while a politician will screw up and say something that's against the banks or the oil companies or something, a Republican, and you'll be like, hmm, that, that doesn't seem quite right. I'll take it, right? And then you will literally see the Heritage Foundation write an email and they'll get leaked and we'll cover mm -hmm. it on the show, or one of these other think tanks, American Enterprise Institute, and it'll say like, hey, dummy, <laughs> like this is the official position on that. And then somebody on his staff obviously goes to the politician and goes, no, 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 that's where our bread is buttered. Yes. That's how we get back into office and then you will literally see the politician switch back the next day, next week, say, oh yeah, of course, I meant yes, get more oil <laughs> and pay the workers less, that's what I meant. So, I mean, I can't help but go to why. So, I know why on minimum wage. They, they are a large corporation, Coke Industries, they wanna pay as little as possible. Yes, they got $100 billion now, but there's no end to avarice. And so they think, I pay less to the workers, I make more, right? Why are they against, or why is anybody against Social Security? I mean, is it the same thing? It, I pay less in taxes, is that, is that the thinking? Well, I think it's a combination of things. <clears throat> they have an ideology, a pseudo-libertarian, because mm -hmm. they certainly will change it when it suits their needs, but they have an ideology that supports their economic self-interest. Mm -hmm. And it's an ideology that says no government. Well, if you remove government, then the powerful and those with the resources, and those with the money, and those with the power can do whatever they want. So Social Security is an effective government program that works. And as Senator Sanders says in the film, they want to destroy that because they don't believe that government should be protecting the, the rest of the country. 
See, I, I said to Robert, uh, and I should admit some bias here. I, I know Robert, and I and we're good <laughs> friends, and and I love his work, right? And I was saying right before we got started that uh, I always learn something from these interviews, and you just said something that I put it in a way that I hadn't thought of it before. So, in a world where the government is basically, you know, and, and it, we could talk about it in the financial industry, somebody had said before. Look, the guys who are breaking the laws are the are the robbers, right? And the regulators are the cops. And the robbers don't want more cops on the beat, <laughs> right? So yes. they, they want deregulation mm -hmm. and they want to uh, take away the government so that, so I understood that part, but you put it great there. If you're incredibly rich and there is no cops on the beat, you have so much pow more power than the average guy. Right. Whereas if the government says no, 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 everybody's equal, and everybody has the same vote, and David Koch has one vote, and you know Joe Johnson has one vote, mm -hmm. and you guys are equal in the, and if you go to court, I'm going to view you as equals. Well, that negates his hundred billion dollars. That's part of the reason he mm -hmm. hates the government. That's exactly right. Yes. See, yes, that's it, great. It, it, that's it, brilliant. It completely. To end. Again, they have an, I don't think they get up and look in the mirror and say, how can I screw people over? But they have an sure. ideology that serves that. And they have an intellectual framework that serves that. We want to make sure this happens. And then they turn all these incredible sums of money loose. Again, there's a section in the movie, uh, as I said, the minimum wage section where, get this for a minute, we were talking about this before, a minimum wage worker would have to work full time 76 years to make what the Cokes make in one hour. Now, if you want to talk about inequality, <laughs> that's as strong and as clear as you possibly can make it. Not in one year, not in one month, not in one day. In one hour, you'd yes. have to work 76 years at right. minimum wage, and then they say the minimum wage is too high. Yes, right. And then, they, <laughs> and then they give money to think tanks that go out and write papers showing how the minimum wage is going to hurt the country and hurt workers and cut back on jobs, you know, all kinds of things which are not accurate. Right. So now let's talk about uh, their relationship with African Americans because they, we're going to get to how they tried to repair that literally yesterday. Okay. And so that's a really interesting story. First off, uh, there's a couple parts of the movie uh, where you talk about that. One is voter ID laws. Yes. So what are they doing with voter ID laws? Well, there's, this, there's a whole new section on voter ID laws where they are very aggressively, they are supporting a series of politicians who are fighting for the voter suppression laws. They are, vo they are supporting ALEC, which is probably the primary source of voter ID laws. ALEC is a conservative organization which has lots of state legislators, lots of corporations, and ALEC writes a one-size-fits-all. So they write a piece of legislation about voter suppression, and then it gets introduced in all these different states. The Cokes are supporting that. The Cokes are supporting some of these so-called uh, polling organizations where they send people to the polling places and they are intimidating people who come there. And so that's been, you know, a significant thrust coming from them. And what is that statistic? There's a better chance that you'll hit, get hit by lightning than there'll be any voter fraud. But that doesn't stop it from it. Doesn't stop the efforts. So to me, that's where you know that they're disingenuous. I mean, maybe even on that, they somehow get themselves to believe they're doing the right thing so they can look at themselves in the mirror and stuff. But they know that there's almost no voter fraud and they know they're trying to suppress minority votes, poorer votes, because they think it leans democratic and is against their agenda. That's a dirty trick. Like, you'd have to do a tremendous amount of self-delusion mm -hmm. to get to the point where you think that that's, you're really concerned about voter fraud that doesn't exist and you're willing to sacrifice a huge percentage of the voters that that don't get to vote and and you know so and it's they know they know they don't want people voting that are more likely to vote Democrats and if that's minorities mainly they don't give a damn about that so then you've got North Carolina uh, what, what's happening in North Carolina North Carolina there was a very uh, effective local school district that was functioning and working well and the Cokes started attacking the idea of that school district and the idea that they were using uh, busing to move people 
And through their uh, really using of America, Americans for Prosperity uh, in a very robust fashion, they had an impact on the local school board election. And for a while, candidates who supported their conservative philosophy were in charge, and they were literally trying to resegregate that school district. And it was a very, and it's wonderful in the movie, very moving stuff of young women and men, black and white, going to school together and talking about what it would mean to them. They couldn't see their friends anymore. And it's, it's one of the you know, really strong, gripping stories from the film. Fortunately, the locals fought back. They said, you know, we don't want Americans for Prosperity telling us what to think. And the school board was thrown out and the original folks were reinstated. That one's the hardest one to explain. And maybe it's because I'm, after all this time, I'm still a little naive. Because I remember doing a story about that and how mad the locals were. They're like, we can show you how well the school is doing. We can show it to you in numbers. We can show it to you with the, if you talk to the people. And it wasn't just talking to the minorities in right. the town. Whites in the town, we love that it's integrated and it's working. And they try to destroy that. That is, that has very little to do with their economic advantage. So that's kind of an outlier in that sense. And what it... Well, I think it goes back to what we were talking about before. It is an example of government working well and effectively. And it is a government saying, you know, this is what you do to have better schools. And I'm sure there was a percentage of people who were pissed off that they maybe had to take a longer bus ride or drive their kids further to school, right? You know, there's always some of that. But the majority said, no, we love these schools. But we want these from schools. Kansas, I mean, it, <laughs> David Koch obviously lives on Park Avenue in New York, but I think Charles Koch still lives in Kansas. They have nothing new in North Carolina. No, no, I, you're being, funny enough, you're being too fair and too kind to them because, like, it's just too random a topic to be like, all right, I'm going to show that the government doesn't work under any circumstance. I'm going to go make sure we stop integration in North Carolina and we're going to resegregate the schools. That seems to have a real obvious racial component. Okay, now finally, then there's the, the African Americans affected in Arkansas by one of their plants and, the, and the, what goes in the river. Coke's own Georgia Pacific and this small community in Arkansas that one of our terrific researchers found where people are literally dying of cancer. And person after person talks about what Georgia Pacific is doing in the environment. And you see people with masks on, you see people coughing, you see people turning to the camera and saying, tell David Koch, he's costing me my life. And it's deeply moving, deeply, deeply upsetting. And then we show David Koch Gives, was a cancer survivor mm -hmm. and gives money to hospitals and medical facilities. And I'm glad he does that. But it doesn't stop what is going on here, which could be stopped. You can take factories. You can make them safer. You can protect the environment. But it costs money. It costs a little extra. So there's a cancer survivor who's like, no, 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 big bad government making me regulate the plants so that I don't have the pollution in the river, which, you know, we've got all those sick patients right down the river, right, with cancer. And, but he makes it all uh, better because he writes a check to cancer foundations. And so that leads us to what happened yesterday. So they give $25 million to the United Negro College Fund. So it's all okay, Robert. You yes, see that? Sir. It turns out they love black people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> see, they just write that little check and it, and it all goes away. Yes, uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess I'm glad that the United Negro College got the money. Sure. I'm glad that the American Ballet got some money from David Koch, right. although they booed him at Brooklyn when his name was announced a couple oh, of years ago because he was financing a ballet. So they do, the Kochs do, unlike the Waltons who don't give a penny to anybody, the Kochs do give some money for artistic stuff, for medical stuff. But when you have $100 billion, it's inconceivable what a small portion of their net worth this is. And more profoundly, they are supporting policies, they are supporting ideas, and they're supporting candidates who will make the country worse for a huge percentage of us living and working here. It, it, honestly, it reminds me, I'm not saying they're doing this, but it reminds me of the old mob bosses that you know that you take, you take, you take, and then you throw a parade. And then <laughs> yes, you sir. sometimes the mob bosses will literally yeah. throw 
like change yes. from right. the from the floats. Yep. And then people will scramble to pick up the money. Right. Fighting for the crumbs. Yeah, right? fighting literally. for the crumbs. It's so the it's an old school trick. Roman They're doing circuses with it. Fighting for the exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. It's the oldest trick in the book, <laughs> yeah. right? And we and we fall for it all, unfortunately every time. And I look honestly, I think the Negro College Fund owes you a huge debt. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I mean you do a movie mm -hmm. it just comes out, right? Uh, that a lot of people see where they've done all these things to African Americans, and it's obvious. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, "Oh, I got it." I, I yeah. Wild coincidence! Mm -hmm. Right <laughs> after the movie comes out, I'm going to write a $25 million mm -hmm. check to a, a fund that educates African Americans just to show I'm not against African Americans. So, look, if you've done nothing else and you got those guys $25 million, yes. great, <laughs> yes. great. And look, we both at the Young Turks and at Brave New Films, Brave New Productions, we want to do something positive for the world, right? So. You could always know that you educated <laughs> a lot of people, people. <laughs> yes. yeah. by going after yeah. <laughs> and telling the truth about the Koch brothers. If it wasn't true, mm. then they believe me, they're not interested in writing $25 million checks they don't have to write. No, that's, right? that's for sure. <laughs> so first of all, let's just remind everybody where they can see the movie. They can go to kochbrothersexposed.com. The film is there, free. And most importantly, after you've seen it, get others to watch it. You can forward the link to people. And then we're trying something very new this time, which is we've divided each of the sections of the film up. So you can go to the KochBrothersExposed.com and for, again for free, forward the section on the Cokes and unions mm -hmm. to people if that's their major concern. Forward the section on Cokes and the environment if that's their concern. Forward the section on Cokes and Citizens United. Cokes on minimum wage, because we do live in a world where many people have maybe more of a narrow specific interest, but let them see how the Cokes affect unions, and then they might want to look at the bigger picture. Or wherever they are, unfortunately, because the Cokes are in so many areas, there are multiple sections that you can send on. But the crucial thing, and we've talked about this over the years, <clears throat> people have to do something. It's not enough yeah. to be pissed off. It's not enough to be upset. This is a tool. And we have failed with this film if hundreds of thousands and ultimately millions don't use this tool. So that's, that's exactly where I was going to get to next. And by the way, the, the links for all those things that Robert just mentioned will be below in the description box in this video. Okay? Right. So you can start checking them out immediately. But look, you know, I have plenty to do with uh, you know, running the TYT network, hosting the Young Turks, doing interviews here, et cetera. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you, you were incredibly successful mainstream director and you got into this. And, and I did Wolfpack because we actually care, right? And that's why we're friends, because mm -hmm. we want to try to do something positive in the world. So I in this case, what, what's the action that people can take uh, to make a difference? Well, the first action is the, you know, if you change people's hearts. If you get to people's hearts, you will then affect their minds and then you'll affect their behavior. Mm -hmm. So that's what film does versus a book or other things. Right. You can move people. They see these stories. They'll be emotionally moved. Get them thinking and then go to where you have been for years, which is, yes, the Koch brothers are doing very bad things. We want to stop them. We want to educate people. But we've got to stop dark money in politics. Mm -hmm. Our lives, our country will not be the country we want until we stop it being for sale. And right now it's legally for sale. And every one of us is paying a price. Your ability to get a home, your ability to get a job, your ability to get a loan, uh, and you name it. And it is being impacted by the fact that a small group are buying up our elected officials. So as we taped this today, uh, we did a story on the Young Turks today about uh, uh, Vance McAllister, he's the guy who got caught kissing his staffer on tape, the family values guy out of Louisiana, of course. But much more important was he went to a group last week and admitted to them that uh, his fellow congressman said that if he votes uh, one way in a Bureau of Land Management, he's going to get a $1,200 check from the Heritage Foundation. If he votes the other way, he claimed that he was going to get a $1,000 check from some environmental group, which is hard to believe. But anyway, <laughs> but, that's, but that's the auction. That's yes. the open auction that our congressmen right. are in. And he's so stupid that he admitted to this group <laughs> that he was mad 
that once he voted, he didn't get his proper bribe. He didn't get yeah. the $1,200 check from the Heritage Foundation that he was expecting. And he thinks it was dirty politics by Republicans in Louisiana that stopped his bribe from coming in the mail. That's dirty politics. He's not <laughs> getting the dirty bribe. Politics. That's the part of Where's bribe? Where's my bribe? <laughs> yeah. I was playing good, clean politics, <laughs> yes. expecting my bribe in the, ch in wow. the mail, and I didn't get it. Wow. So that's the situation that we're in now. So. Look, of course, once we get on this, I can't yes. help but say wolf well, com. Definitely. I mean, you've been there. It's an important organization. It's, it's been a critical role. We, we link to it at the, on the website. And thank you for starting it and taking the time to keep it going because this is a fundamental issue. Again, no matter what your issue is, name any, what is your top voting issue? Whatever it is, it's deeply impacted by money and politics. And Wolfpack is a way to fight that. And if it, you were saying before we got started, if it wasn't the Koch brothers, it'd be somebody else. Right. And, and that's important. Every st look, every story needs a villain. And the Koch brothers are villainous in what they are doing, how they are doing it, and the resources they're putting into it. But it's our job to change the system. That's it's right. our job to connect the dots. And if there's one thing we've done, try to do, we don't always do it successfully, in every film, it's connect the dots. So mm -hmm. it's not just Walmart. It's capitalism unleashed. It's not just drones. It's the belief that we are safer by invading, occupying, and killing people. It's connecting those dots, and that's what we need to do, I believe, to have the country and the world that we want to live in. So finally on that note, look, you and we've talked about this a lot too. People don't wake up in the morning and think, I'm evil, right? right. Yes. The Koch brothers, I'm sure, have convinced themselves in most of these instances that they're doing the right thing by their ideology, et cetera, right? Because they got to live with themselves. It's just that if you allow people to donate to politicians, their own self-interest will naturally lead them to believe that the right thing to do is for their own self-interest and to get richer. And they will donate to politicians and drive them to those conclusions. And yes, the Koch brothers are a perfect example of that, and the movie shows it, right? Uh, but just fill in the blank. You know, it's not an issue of the Koch brothers. If it wasn't them, or the next time around, it'll be some other brothers or sisters, <laughs> et cetera, who have this financial incentive to pay off the politicians, and they will if you let them. And people must understand, again, this, and this is part of our job, all of our jobs, and all of your jobs to, with the sections of the film, it's not an abstract idea. It is affecting the way you live money and politics. It is taking a toll and you are paying, everybody is paying a price for it. Whether it's the kids going to school in North Carolina, it's a, that community in Arkansas who's got the inordinate rate of cancer, boy right. does it affect their lives. But it's also whether you're gonna get paid less or more on social security that you paid into your whole life. Whether you know when someone is starting out in your family, they're gonna get a minimum wage that they can live on or not. These things all matter in our lives. And unfortunately, there's two guys in the country who have such a bigger say in that than we do because of the way the system is set up. Exactly. Whether you can you know, get your house, whether it's going underwater, whether your mortgage, whether you know you can pay for kids, the student loan, the I mean, it it just goes on and on. And guns. I mean, it it's just so many different areas where the populace thinks, believes differently but is not able to implement that because a few people are buying up democracy. All right, everybody check out the movie, Robert Greenwald. Great pleasure to talk Thank to you. Thank you, my friend.